<laughs> you are still watching ways really money <laughs> international day for preservation of the ozone layer is celebrated on september 16 every year this event commemorates the date of signing of the um, montreal protocol on sub uh, substances that deplete the ozone layer in um, 1987. ah i think we, we have said this thing over and over again whatever it is that we can do to preserve our ozone layer please let us just be doing it because we we're seeing signs every day. I mean, the weather is getting harsher. Yeah. I think uh, who shared the picture of the snow that fell in Joss? Joss, yeah. Yeah, Joss has always been like that, honestly. So I uh, I mean, I've I've witnessed it as a child, right? I've heard about it. So I've witnessed it, but my sister I, I lived in Joss for years. About it. Really? Yeah, uh, because we know that just is that cold. Is that cold? But yeah. you know, it's not. It's not cold to the point you see snow now. Really? Uh, it's not, uh, but you, you saw it. So yeah, but it was like like just very. Little. It wasn't as much as what I saw in the picture. So I mean, I'm so excited. Part of this That's like part of why a lot of um, white people settled in just before the fight. Yeah, and... in just before the place became a lot more traumatic. Cold but hey. Style. Ozone layer, let's try as much as possible to do our bit in preserving it. All right, so quickly, Manny, what did you find first in the news? Mm, something very interesting. Russia releases murderers and sex offenders to go to fight in Ukraine war for six months. So the Russian government has released murderers and sex offenders to go to Ukraine to fight for the next six months. In a new video obtained by Mail Online, Putin's chef was filmed offering a pardon to violent criminals and sex offenders locked up in a Russian prison if they survive fighting in Ukraine. Wagner Boss 61 told prisoners that they should take their own lives instead of being captured in Ukraine, holding one grenade for the enemy and one for themselves. So, um, video shows this guy telling the criminals that they can become war heroes or be shot as deserters as the kremlin steps up recruitment of inmates after suffering a humiliating defeat against ukraine's army in the east so um what do you think about this or <laughs> sex offenders and, and murderers, murderers. For me, it's, it's different things. I think that, number one, Putin just exposed himself. I, they are not as great as they thought they would be. You know, they just thought that Ukraine was just going to be a small, easy, easy peasy, you know. And then they are here now, and they are being defeated on every side. And he's like, what the heck is going on? So this is like a, a, a cry for help. It's like he's desperate. Putin is desperate at this point. Mm -hmm. So he's gone into their prisons to get out these guys. So for me, there are different things I think about too. Um, it's like a death sentence because these ones are not, have not been trained. They're not skilled. So you give them guns, they go out to fight. How are they going to fight? Mm. What are they going to do? So it's like a death sentence and they don't have a choice. And if you try to run away, they're going to put one bullet in your head. Mm. You know. On the other hand, I still think it's a smart move. Is it a smart move? Well, what I... He's you, just trying to decongest his prison. Have, no, I don't think it's about <laughs> decongestion. I don't think so. I think it's more than that. I think they are... I, th but I think, it's, I think he's exploiting... Um, he's exploiting the people. So because they are criminals, so you already condemned anyway. Yeah, you, most you of are them already, you don't, yes, you are damned if you do. already been given the death sentence. Yeah. So what are you doing inside yeah. there? Why don't you come and join the army and help us fight? And solution. then if they somehow survive after six months, they become free men. Hmm. And you know what they say? What God cannot do those God yeah, exists. Uh, so these guys can go will, out, so fight in the war, because, come back alive. Because they know their lives depend on it. Exactly. So this was a very <laughs> interesting story I found today. Do we have Uti now? I'm not sure. So it says some 286 foreigners conferred with Nigerian citizenship. To, they were conferred with it. And they've explained why they chose to become Nigerians. So while we're busy jackpotting, some people are busy trying to become <laughs> our citizens. But you see the interesting part. Okay, there was a German businessman. He said he's been in Nigeria, God knows when. I mean, since I think 1976 or something. So he's been back and forth. So he is happy right now because he then has the freedom to be able to run his business, you know, um, trips, visit his family yeah, and all of those constraints that he was having over 
the years there was a pakistani lady too that talked about or a pakistani yeah she they, she talked about you know the fact that nigerians are warm people nigerians are nice people nigerians um what's it called there's a part i really want to read say nigeria is a country i love so much i would want to retire here i love nigerians because they are respectful they're hospitable they treat foreigners like their brothers and sisters <laughs> it says, so it says there was something else i think who else does it i like everything about nigeria its citizens the environment generally i say wow like nigerians are very accommodating hospitable and i i have always seen nigeria as my second home this was from one khalid guy um so um, the lady that said she's been struggling to become a citizen of Nigeria for over the years, but to no avail. So now she's really happy that she's um, a citizen. It says, I pray God Almighty continues to bless you all integration as you have become part of us. This was from, uh, what's his name? Our Minister for Interior. Raouf mm. Well, how did they obtain this citizenship, if I may ask? Uh, that one said no even can sign me <laughs> <laughs> what i was going to say that is two things for me right we talked about black people do be, being the biggest problem of black, black people yesterday and in that conversation we see how all the time when a black man is given an opportunity you throw your fellow black man under the bus the reason you will say nigerians are warm they are hospitable is because nigerians anything in in a foreign skin we worship we worship you we love you. We respect you. We treat you with respect. Our fellow people, we don't treat them with respect. Mm -mm. I will say to you this, right? I've seen businesses in Nigeria. I've seen countless successful businesses, especially hospitality businesses, mm -hmm. restaurants, catering services, and all of that. They are run by Lebanese. They are run by foreigners, right? Big, big time businesses. Have Nigerian governments given Nigerians the same opportunity that they give to foreigners when no. they approach the government? No. no. You meet a brick wall. But a fellow, um, a, a, sorry, a, but a foreigner comes into your country, you open your arms, you give them lands, you give them spaces to do their business, you give them, make it easy for them to do their of course they would, Do you understand? The, the, the disparity is too much. As a citizen in Nigeria, I know. That there are so many things that you want to do just because your skin is not white. You can't have access to your governor. You can't have access to your local government chairman. But if, if you carry a white man money and you're going to anybody's office, it's open doors you just be meeting. So it is okay for them to say that, oh, I love Nigeria. Nigeria is warm and all of that. But on the other hand, I wanted also to bring it back to Nigerians. Know that the opportunities are here. The opportunities for greatness is here. For the fact that foreigners want to stay in your country, there's something... So whatever it is that we're doing, we need to start thinking, what can we do differently to change the narrative and what can we do differently to thrive in this economy? Because where the money is, where the numbers is, is within Nigeria, not outside. Oh, uh, I, you're very right. I think when you see flies buzzing somewhere, there's something of there course. You know, that is attracting them. So I just think that this whole jackpot thing does not make any sense at all. Sadly, many people <laughs> because they can't are jackpotting. See. <laughs> uh, by the minute so we'll take a break right when we come back from the break let's discuss partnerships stay with us